I didn't distribute it. I didn't make any money. I didn't extort anybody. So, Lummy, this is um, the trailer that TN- TNT is putting out for its second season of Rich and Shameless. Yes. Nonetheless. Dennis Rodman was like the bad boy on basketball. Rich is one of the biggest unsolved homicides. There were these sex tapes of Hulk Hogan. Eric Napostle absolutely pulled the trigger. TNT's new sports docuseries with shocking true stories behind sports' biggest scandals. Dennis made millions of dollars a year. Why are his bills not paid? Explosive cover-ups. Gawker posted clips of the Kogan sex tape, something that nobody expected. They totally sabotaged me. And shocking. You! You! Oh, okay. <laughs> you! I don't totally think this is good for your blood pressure. Sabotage me and shocking crimes. I couldn't have done this, but I'm doing life in prison. Who has the most to gain from the rent and being dead? 911, what's your emergency? Got nothing but gunshots. This guy left a trail of evidence that was so overwhelming. Oh, these are, these are the people that are covering Lummy? Yeah, it's every, right, hold on they here. just put everything together. <clears throat> All right, so here we go. Hold on. Got nothing but gunshots. So, Dennis Rodman, this guy left Hulk Hogan, of evidence that was Eric, so Eric, I don't know who that guy is. Anybody know who Eric Napask, Nap- 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 Naposky? Yeah. Uh, no. Never hey, Alexa, who is Eric Naposky? Hmm. I don't know that one. Yeah, T- like Neither do we, ho. TNT's doing a... Full blown yippee yo uh, and Eric convic- Napaski and he, he what? He was a convicted uh, murderer. He was an ex NFL and World League of American football player. Oh. <laughs> he played for the Patriots <laughs> for a year, Colts for a year. Had in a the- pretty lengthy career, 1988 to 1997. And he yeah. killed. He, he, he killed was, somebody. Hold on. He was no schlep. Lengthy career in the World Football League, not in the NFL. He had a two year run in the NFL. Is he in prison? Did he kill somebody? Yes, he. Uh, he's a convicted murderer. He was convicted of killing his that looks happens. like a living girlfriend and his her secret lover. So, so he could the two point five million dollar life insurance. Uh, Lorenzo White. <clears throat> Lorenzo Wright. Hey Alexa, who's Lorenzo Wright? Lorenzen. Lorenzo Christopher Wright was an American athlete, a Detroit native. He started at Miller High School and Wayne State University. I mean, I'm Wright glad. Wright is renowned yeah. for I'm his glad. noteworthy Th- uh, accomplishments in the sport of track and field. <laughs> That's enough Lorenzo now. Lorenzo C. Wright's Shut crowning up! athletic achievement uh, would Alexa. come as a member of- Shut up your hole. I mean, I'm glad they came out with Rodman and, and, and Hogan because so far, right? I mean, so right. far. There's a, there's a right. lot of Right. <laughs> Angelica Lauren, queen lover of the throne. Once you have me, I'll put you in a zone. You'll be blowing on my phone saying, baby, I want to come home. There's nobody tighter, wetter, or better. Right? He uh, he died in 2010, Lorenzen Wright, at 34 years old. There was a lot of mystery around his death. It says Wright's body was found with multiple bullet wounds in a swampy field in East Memphis on July 28, 2010. <laughs> The 30 year, uh, 34-year-old father of six had been missing for days before his body was discovered. All right, that's a great story. Yep. You had this real true crime mystery. Every day I'm hustling. Rich and Shameless, a new sports docuseries, premieres May 7th on TNT. Hmm. All right, now, I... Stop. Mother effers. <clears throat> Stop. Stop that. Oh, my God, look what it just did to me. Oh, no. It kicked out. <clears throat> it zipped me when it's... I'm, I'm having a full-blown zip meltdown right now. I lost everything. Oh. Not the first. Restore. <clears throat> all right, shouldn't let me. All right. Dennis Rodman was like the bad boy. What happened to Seth? Uh, stupid. Let me see if I can get this one over here. You see, move all this box over there. And then, oh, there you go. It was just a little bit of a problem. So, I went into the uh, I, IMWB or whatever the hell it is, Lummy, and to look at this series, R- Rich and Shameless Season 2, and then it broke it down into episodes, and so I broke down the Hogan episode. Oh, yeah? And it's just, here, this is why I didn't participate. The story of an American icon and world-famous wrestler, Hulk Hogan, he had it all. Fans, money, a loving family, and, and his own TV show. Well, not when 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 the when he when he blasted my wife, he didn't have any of that. He was down and out, right? Yeah, him. And, I mean, him and Linda were you know divorced. Oh. <laughs> but when a infamous sex tape 
was leaked to the media, it changed his life forever. The film uncovers the scandal uh, beyond the ring, the man versus the legend, and his ultimate fight for privacy. The real story is... Why are not why are the people that brokered it, that extorted Hogan, that got it to Gawker and made their lives better at my dispense, why did they not get prosecuted? That's the story. Sure is. <clears throat> I mean, okay, we all know, we all know the Hogan Gawker situation. His privacy was invaded. They had no right. To publish that tape, it was in my bedroom. It was not for public consumption. It was, you know, erroneously shot, privately shot. It wasn't like the curtains were open and the next door neighbor just happened to, you know, have his camcorder up there. And and really, honestly, if somebody had done, if you were blasting your girl, uh, Lummy, and the curtains were open and somebody had a high, like a high... Zoom, you know, super, you know, telephoto lens, and they would get get the, get everything. That would be legal. Mm. That would be legal. <laughs> but this wasn't the case at all. <clears throat> this was, you know, on a surveillance tape that was, you know, not meant for public consumption, and the people that stole it and brokered it and distributed it. And extorted Hogan with it. What happened? Let me just ask you this. What happened to them? Uh, I'd Great say, question. I'd say nothing. Nothing happened to them. <laughs> other than Gawker, who published it, got sued. And Hogan bankrupt. But they got sued to the point of $141 million dollars which they could not survive, and it bankrupted their company. And Hogan was their largest creditor, so when their company was sold in bankruptcy for a hundred and th- I'm sorry, for thirty five mil thirty seven thirty eight million dollars, um, Hogan was their largest creditor, and Hogan got thirty five million dollars of it. He never saw even close to the hundred and forty one million. He took. He got $35 million from Gawker, and at that point, then he had to pay Peter Thale because it was, you know, it was it was lawsuit financed. A lot of people do that. It's it's contingency or, you know, things like that. Loss litigation financing has been around for and a lot of people made that made that like the big controversy. Oh, you know, Hogan had a guy named Peter Thale who was the original owner of PayPal who financed his lawsuit because, um, oh, who was the guy who owned Gawker? Um, whatever the hell the guy's name was. Oh, I don't remember. Um, Denton, was it Denton? I don't know. Uh, they Because Gawker outed Peter Thale as being gay. And so mm-hmm. Peter Thale said, if I can ever get back to those guys, uh, I'm going to get back to them. So. Right. He saw Hogan was suing him. He called Hogan's attorneys up and said, I don't know what type of resources you have, but here, let me lend a helping hand. And it made their case even stronger. It's a Nick Denton. <clears throat> Nick, Nick Denton, Denton. yeah. And, and, so, and, and so there's been several documentaries about this particular deal, but none of it is because there was two lawsuits. There was Gawker versus Hogan versus Gawker, which Hogan won 141 million, took home 35. And then there was Hogan versus Cox, Mike Calta, Spice Boy, uh, Don Buckwald, uh, uh, Tony Burton, uh, you know, uh, and Keith Rich. I'm sorry, Keith Davidson. The people that actually stole the tape just. Extort, extorted Hogan in a in a hotel room and then subsequently sent it to Gawker to be published. Hogan then sued them after he had won the Gawker deal. It was brilliant lawyering. He took two bites at the apple. He's like, I can sue the people that distributed it. Then I can go back and sue the people that got it to them. Instead of lump <clears throat> instead of lumping it all into one, it's it's basically Hogan versus Cox Media mm-hmm. is what it's it's but it's what it's legally referred to. And I was, you don't understand, I was 
so looking forward to this case. Because as, 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 as this case is unraveling, four years of it, as it's unraveling and discoveries coming out, and, and I can go to the Pinellas County Courthouse website and look at this because it's a public matter. So you can, if you know where to look, if you know, you can, you can follow any court case that's, you know, the rulings and what the, you can follow it all. Right. <clears throat> and then the discovery and whole nine yards. And I'm looking at this and I'm looking at the discovery and I'm looking at phone records and who's calling who and. Mike Caltas calling Tony Burton, his agent, at 1.30. He's, now he's doing mornings. He's calling his agent at 1.30 in the morning and talking to him for two hours. He's calling Mike Oliveira, who's a big swing and D over at Cox, at 3 in the morning and talking to them for 90 minutes, you know, 14 different times. Like, you know, you could, it's, it's, it's just the phone records alone are very telling. Do you think this uh, Rich and Shameless series is going to paint you as some mysterious figure who declined comment? I don't know. No, they'll probably <clears throat> mention you briefly like the other some ones Some dark have. shadowy I, figure. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so the, the, the story, so Hogan versus Cox, I'm, I'm watching it all untangle. I'm watching all these, all this testimony. I'm watching all the phone records get uncovered. I'm watching this thing develop. It's, it's laying itself all on out. How, you know, Richard Pierce, Spice Boy, stole the tape from my office. They transcribed it. They shopped it. They took Hogan, you know, Spice Boy uh, had his wife's best friend, Lori, Lori Burbage, meet a guy named Keith Davidson in a hotel, the San Pearl Hotel in Clearwater Beach, uh, to try to imbe- try to extort $300,000 out of Hogan for the rights to this tape. Spice Boy couldn't appear himself because Hogan would say, that's Spice Boy. <laughs> like, yeah. like he would know that the jig is up. And uh, so they do all that, and th- there was no arrests made, nothing, nothing. So Spice Boy then gives it to Calta. Calta gives it to Tony Burton. Tony Burton walks it down to the Gawker, Gawker place. They publish it. I lose my job. Mike Calta keeps his job. Hogan makes $35 million. And now they got this big fancy lawsuit. This video, this video was hosted on Cox servers. Which there's witnesses that you sent through company to. emails, if I'm not mistaken, right? Through company emails. So Hogan had Cox dead to rights and i'm sitting back thinking god this is exactly what i need i can't wait for this thing to go to trial i don't have any i don't even have like with the gawker thing i was deposed and i was you know going to testify and 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 i was kind of at the center of that i'm the guy that taped it i i i had to admit that it's true so you know cox i mean i'm sorry hogan versus gawker I'm a lo- not nervous, but I'm certainly a part of, and I'm going to have to test. I I I did testify. The fi- I pled the fifth. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to hurt Hogan's case. I pled the fifth. That that Nick didn't went on Good Morning America the next day and said, the judge allowing Bubba the Love Sponge to plead the fifth gutted our case. <laughs> Really, for for real. If you could go back in time and like never meet Hogan, no, 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 I wouldn't want that. I just would have never, ever, 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 ever videotaped that excursion. <laughs> that's it. Well, right. Well, that's not the that's not the four that's choice not the, question I'm on, asking you. Hold on, that's not the game you're playing. Yeah. Okay. Well, of course, that's the <clears throat> the best option. But I'm saying, if you were to erase the memories and the fun times you had with him, um, would that have been worth? you know, saving the headache that you have had for the last decade yeah, from the sex tape? Yeah, absolutely. I'd still, so I, like, I, would, I would have been able to control my own radio destiny. I wouldn't be, you know, looked, uh, you know, half the people think that I'm a, right, no, 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 a cuckolded, I, cuckolded scumbag. Okay, but I'm saying, like, is that, in, in your estimation, because you've you've had the experience with Hogan being your best bud and all those good times. And then obviously the headache from the sex tape. If, if you could go back in time and never meet Hogan, yes. would you? The answer is yes. I would prefer not to have met Hogan and, and avoid and, all and, this mess. And ju- because Hogan did it wasn't a shot in my radio arm. I didn't need Hogan to, no, I to... know, but I'm just saying like as a friend and as a person and yeah, my answer the... to you is yes. Okay. And so, you know, 
The, the, nobody has covered that. So I'm waiting, man, you know, at with the Hogan versus Gawker, I'm a little bit involved, but I'm not. I already tell the judge I'm going to plead the fifth because I don't want to have anything to do with it. I signed over all rights to Hogan to the tape, which is probably another mistake. If I would have not signed my rights over, I don't know what I have made the money. I don't know. Maybe 50-50. I don't know. Oh. Nonetheless, I was like, when Ho- I, I was like, Hogan, I don't want anything to do with this, buddy. You know, I, I I already look like a real piece of crap. I don't want anything to do with this. So I got out of it. I I, I gave him all rights. I gave, I, I gave him $5,000 and the rights to the tape. And and so this it goes to Troy. So then Hogan wins the Gawker deal. And he's like, okay, now I'm suing Cox. And I know that you guys got it on your servers. And I knew that I know the employee, Mike Calta, sent it to his agent. I have the emails. I have the transcripts. I have, you know, what I have people that worked at Cox that said that they saw it on company computers. I have emails from from Cox people saying, did you see, you know, all I have all of this. Uh, I have, you know, Mike Calta going to the UPS store uh, 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 near, uh, in, near, right by my mom's house. <clears throat> we actually, they actually had uh, the surveillance of him going to the UPS store and sending the the tape out or the 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 disc to to Tony Burton. And so I'm I'm so getting ready for this. I'm like, man, this isn't going to exonerate me, but this is at least going to show the public that I didn't have anything to do with the dissemination of it. I didn't want anybody it, my in my world. This was going to be a private deal between my wife, Hogan, and me. This was never going to get out. I didn't distribute it. I didn't make any money. I didn't extort anybody. I didn't hold anybody's back to the I just I didn't I just I had nothing to do with that portion of it. The only thing I did was hit record, which, trust me, I'm paying dearly for. And so this lawsuit, Hogan versus Cox, was going to lay it all out. And he was going to win even more money because Cox, Apollo, Apollo Management, Apollo Global, do a Google on them. Well, well, let me show you. Hey, Alexa, how much is Apollo Global Management worth? When the market closed on Tuesday, Apollo Asset Management traded at 24 U.S. dollars and 38 cents on the New York Stock Exchange, up 0.7 percent since previous close. Oh, 37.1 billion. I'm sorry. Let me one more time, please. Uh, 37.1 billion. Yeah, the people that own Cox Media uh, are worth 38 billion dollars. So that's a hell of a lot more than 35 million. So you go after them. You got them dead to rights. I'm just waiting for this thing to happen. I'm like, man, the media is going to cover it. Channel 13 is going to cover it. <clears throat> right? Like, it's going to be awesome. They're going to be like, okay, this guy uh, stole the tape from Bubba's office and then shopped it and didn't couldn't get any traction on it, sent it to TMZ. TMZ is like, mm, we'll tell Hogan about it, but we're not going to publish it. It's not worth anything. National Enquirer gave Spice Boy 800 bucks. And and basically, they didn't or eight, yeah, eight hundred bucks. They didn't they didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, he then gives it to Calta. Calta gives it to his agent, and the rest is history. They got everybody dead to rights, and so now they start the deposition phase. Right, Hulk Hogan's people are going to start deposing Mike Calta. Going to start to co- de- uh, de- uh, deposing uh, Mike Oliveira. Going to start deposing Tony Burton. Going to start deposing, you know, Keith Lawless and other people. And guess what happens? What? Cox settles and writes a check for it all to go away. Nobody knows the, the, ask nobody, the know, nobody knows the amount. It's, you know, it's private. I think that happened in the last, what, five years? I remember hearing about it while, while I was there, I think. And, I was standing in the break room watching it on TV. Yeah. Oh, were you? Was, and, yeah, yeah. drinking TV. free coffee. Yeah. I and, took so many K cups from them. Oh my God. I used to get crazy and, mixing those. And, and I'm like <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god and I'm like, oh no. So the public was going to be able to get up to speed on what I've been screaming now. God damn, you guys are sick of hearing it. 
And I'm like, oh, no. The real side of the Hogan sex tape will never be told. No. Oh, no. no. Hulk Hogan settles a $100 million. That's what he was asking for. A $110 million tape lawsuit for after four years of battling in court. And he got that from Cox, not Gawker, right? <clears throat> no, he got it from, he, no, he got $35 million from Gawker. Yep, and then the 110 And then from... he didn't get to 110 for Cox. That's what he was asking for. Oh. They privately settled. Oh, that's Nobody right. knows the no amount. No one knows, no one knows. Now, I've been told, rumor has it, I don't know this to be true, that the settlement was $55 million. So what's the 110 again? The 110 is what he was asking oh, for asking if for they it. went to court. And he had won. He was asking for $110 million, mm. Which was basically, Anna, the balance of the 140 less the 35. Oh, That's where he actually, because that strategic, God, his lawyers were so good. He strategically didn't want to ask for too much. Because it would look egregious, but if you go to the jury on it and you say, "Listen, I was awarded 141 million by the same, you know, court system four years ago," and the other party to the tape that actually distributed, uh, that actually published this, what only was only able to come up with 35, I still got a rightfully so, still got 110 million, and I'm going to put that on the people that gave it to the people. Chances are he would have got it if you won the first one. Mm. Who's I mean if you if you won the first one don't you think the second one is absolutely a lock in you would yeah okay so you won the first one being that your that your privacy your privacy was you know was you know you of invasion and privacy that's you won versus Gawker on invasion and privacy don't you think you're going to win the second one when the subject matter is who got said material to the people that published it don't you think you might win that one too? Yeller. So, uh, so the lawsuit never even went to one deposition. Mm. When it was time for depositions, Apollo Global Management, it's worth how much, Lummy? Uh, Thirty-seven point one billion. Wrote a check. Hulk Hogan reportedly settled his ongoing sex tape lawsuit for one hundred and ten million dollars, less than a year before it was due to go to court. The former WWE WWE wrestler sued Cox radio DJs Mike Cowhead Calta and Mike Spice Boy Lloyd for allegedly leaking the tape in 2007 as part of their radio wars. In the sex tape, Hulk, whose real name is Terry Bollea, is shown having sex with Bubba Clem's wife, Heather, Heather, while using racial, racial slurs. According to Abedu's Nine on courts filed on Thursday, State uh, state that Lloyd, his wife Tasha, and their lawyer Keith Davison signed uh, permanent injunctions not to possess the video or leak any footage. Hmm. <clears throat> Does it keep going on? Yes. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, in the lawsuit, Hulk accused Calta of getting his agent to leak the tape, while Tampa police claim Lloyd stole the DVDs from his studio, from my studio, made copies and distributed clips. That's not from Bubba Clem's hurt feelings. That's from the Tampa Police Department. The jury trial had been due to start in January of 2021. Lummy, I was literally counting the days down like that Billy Madison guy. <laughs> I can't imagine. In 2016, a Pinellas County jury found the, the website Gawker had invaded Hulk's privacy uh, by publishing the sex tape uh, and were ordered to pay $141 million in damages. Eventually set settling for $31 million, it led to the website declaring themselves bankrupts and shutting down. Hulk was seeking the remainder of the balance from Cox Radio and the other defendants. In the infamous footage, Hulk slaps his stomach while saying, I can't believe I, f I just ate. I feel like a pig. The, the National Enquirer published a report in 2015 about Hulk using certain racial slurs uh, in the video. Shortly after, the former wrestler was fined, f was fired by the WWF a a after the news emerged and he used the N-word and was also stripped from the Hall of Fame. Hulk later addressed his use of racial slurs in an interview with The View, and he admitted he was probably the stupidest thing that he had ever said. The 60s, blah, blah, blah. See, it doesn't... Okay, here we go. People need to realize that you, that you inherit things from your environment, and where I grew up in South Tampa was literally a blah, 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 blah. So, Anna, yeah. everybody glosses over... Mm-hmm. 
That first part. Everybody glosses over the very first part, if I can read the very, very first sentence. Everybody glosses over the former WWE wrestler sued Cox Radio DJs Mike Cowhead Calta and Matt Spice Boy Lloyd for allegedly leaking the sex tape in 07 as part of their radio wars. Nobody covers that. Right. That is huge. Mm-hmm. Well, um, in this one, Bleacher reported because uh, send me it, send it. To okay, me. it was just a quick little, little sentence from uh, what was his name Ro- Rojas from Bay News Nine. Jo- Josh Rojas. But this is on the Bleacher Report. It's just a how does a, how does Mike Calta? Where Calta admitted, if you scroll down, it's a line. Oh, sorry. All right, I'm scrolling down. It is right below. Keep going. See, per. In addition to Cox Radio, radio host Mike Cowhead, Calta, and Matt Lloyd were listed as defendants. Hogan alleged that Calta anonymously leaked the tape to Gawker through his agent as part of Calta's Radio Wars versus Bubba Clem. No, no, the last one, right right below that video, the second sentence. Right here? Yeah. Right here? Right below that one. Yep. Per Rojas, Calta admitted to police in Tampa that he stole the DVDs from Clem's studio, made copies of them. And leak some of the contents to other media outlets. <laughs> and you can, and he and he's the number he he's the, the number one rated radio personality in Tampa, Florida, having taken my one oh two five the morning slot. Make sure you set your <clears throat> reservations for Calta Crew seventeen. Oh Jesus. Ready to go, Rhett. No, but like, is it, Anna, isn't it just, I know that it, I talk about it incessantly, but it's just, just mind-numbing. That, I know. That, would it dry, Anna, if it had happened to you, if it had happened to you, would it have, would it, would you just be absolutely f- continually up for the rest of your life until you got some type of closure or until, all I want is for the public to know. Right. Would, would you not be obsessed with this nonetheless if it had ruined your life and Uh, the person that ruined your life got your job and the person that got your job now is the big swing and d and is heralded as the ultimate radio personnel personality in the city that was hold on and he was your former intern that you fired for ripping stuff off uh (laughs) let me let me say this yes and no yes initially obviously probably for years But I also think, and this is because I've done a lot of self-development work on myself over the last decade, but if they've already taken that much, don't let them take, you know, you know, free rent in your head for the rest of your life. For your sanity. Yeah, because like if they've already taken your job and they've taken everything from you. I just want the public to know. You you also have to kind of, and I don't want to say let it go, because you're, you're, you're doing stuff proactively you know with you know your projects that you're working on i know you've kind of intermittently talked about them and not talked about them um but i also think it's important to not let it don't let it eat you alive for the rest of your life because that's also not a healthy way to live as well no there's also a point where and i get it with bubba is that when things come up and it, it points against him that it really pisses him off now my thing obviously isn't as big as Bubba's, but I totally understand. I've oh, had things fish stolen. Caper. Oh yeah, and that's the thing yeah. is like that pisses me off, and sure. I have to move on from it. But I totally and it, get, and it and directly it's an affects. Story. Yeah, but I lost my whole complete fish business that well, I was and, into, and, and we that, mentioned fish. I get pissed off. That, like that, I really get worked up. So I totally. But understand yours is such is. a small version of mine. But I understand where you're We're coming trying to from. And, and, and here's but the thing, when it affects and, and every and asset of your life, it's hard to to just you know let it go. Like it's much easier. And, said and, than and let me. And here's the thing, man. Had the people that did it to you had you know basically now are the hottest thing on. On, you know, like well, the one guy, the Peruvian, he is a very big fish slinger, which that pisses me off. But obviously, that's not a public thing for people to see. So yours is like a hundred times bigger than mine. But I understand. And, and here's your the thing, anger. man: Tampa media, be, 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 the worst thing that could have happened to me was for this thing to settle, and nobody know the truths behind it. And you're proactively trying to change that, yeah. and that's good. But. The way that it, it eats you up, sometimes I worry that 
you know, every day you're reliving it. That That's probably not healthy. Oh, I'll relive, relive it for the rest of my life. I, I understand, but I also... And, no, and nobody can tell me otherwise. I, like, I'm not telling you, obviously, what to do, but I'm just thinking, like, at some point... You kind of you, you deal with it in your actions, but you kind of have to emotionally well, Anna, let it go. I, I do. I come in here every day, and we we very rarely speak about this. And I do a great show every day. I I do let it go, and I am a, a I have the ability to continue to do a good radio program and make a living in radio and employ others. So I do do that. I, I but, know you do, but, but, but it, I mean that's but, only on on the air. I don't know what you're thinking about. You know the other twenty hours of the day. I mean, I guess for eight of those, you're passed out. Maybe you're yeah, dreaming yeah. about it, but. You know, it, I, I'm sure it eats you up in your in your private life as well. Sometimes it only eats me up because the people got away with it. They uh, got away with yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, and they, I they, and they I literally, and I get that they literally. But you you eating you know it eating you up every day isn't going to change that is what I'm saying. So I'm, you pooping, kinda... I'm pooping blood over it. <laughs> <laughs> 